I, I was spending twenty twenty five dollars a week just trying to be somebody that I'm not. You know what I mean? Like I want I mean, to keep that look. It looks good on you though. Oh, now it know? does. Now it does, bro. It didn't look this good before, right? The one thing I noticed about when you go to a barber, right? Us men, we don't talk. Yeah. Right. It's just yeah. oh, we want this, and then let the barber do his thing. Mm. My man made me Dominican, man. Like, he, <laughs> like I'm like, uh, should I be saying poppy at this at the end? Like, come on, man. Like, this is not what I wanted, but I, I yeah. think it came out okay. Me too. Like, I do it. I do everything myself. Mm. It's cheaper. You know, I used to be the guy, believe it or not, I won best hair in high school. Wow. Exactly, you know, yeah. the wow is more about, damn, what happened, right? Yeah. It's called yeah. engineering, man, stress. Oh yeah, this is the Sociopath Studios. My name is Samuel Edward Yao Ade, and on this channel, we discuss social issues, all right? So I have with me my brother, he's called Harry. He's, he's a financial mogul. He's <laughs> knowledgeable about the things in economics, and uh, business-wise, when if you want to invest your money in anything, please get in touch with him. All right. Hey, Harry, how are you? Good, good. Uh, Harry Obama J. Good. Um, mm -hmm. I won't say I'm a mogul. I'm I'm pretty much P Diddy before he had Bad Boy. You know, like yeah, he's yeah. just trying to make it big, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but look, I'm truly blessed. Um, I have a great partner. Mm. Um, he does a lot of investments, and he basically took me under his wing and you know we work together greatly. You know, our goal is really to just make sure that people are aware. Of what's available because people don't people don't people don't know what they want until mm. they know what's available, right? Oh, is it your business? Is right. It, what so is it about? just just to just to highlight a little bit, um, yeah. I represent TMR Capital Group. Okay. Uh, we're a wealth management financial firm. We help you know provide people opportunities where you know they allow us to help manage their money, but we give yeah. them advice in terms of how to sustain that money. You okay. know, TMR stands for tomorrow. Tomorrow. Why tomorrow? Well, because a lot of people are are invested all their time and effort and money today. But they don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow mm -hmm. will come. That's true. You know, right now, when you work your job, I mean, they talk about 401k and retirement. People don't even know how much money is coming in and out each month. That's true. And they yeah. think that they're going to have a million dollars, two million dollars by the time they retire. But mm. when you really do the math, mm. you're not going to have that, you know, and it's going to be a, a tight situation where, you know what, by the age of, I remember my dad told me this once, you don't want to be the person who retires that now has to go to Walmart to sustain your job so you can wow. continue getting income. Yeah. You know, so people are not being prepared properly. Mm. You go on social media and try to compete with the world. Mm. Nah, we're going to give you a plan. You know, we're going to make budgeting cool again. You know, and how do you do it? Like, let's say, for instance, I have 20,000. Okay. What do I do with it? How, so how, how it, am I going to invest? So it? number one thing, it starts with the goal, right? Uh, we are going to help you achieve your goal, mm. but we have to see your vision. You know, okay. what, what is the lifestyle that you want? You know, because that, that's going to dictate how much you should put in initially yeah. and how much you should keep putting in. Mm. And if we say, hey, look, we need to tighten your budget, we will sit down with you mm. and give you a plan. But it's up to you to make sure that that plan gets executed. Okay. Because we, we can only give you like a path to follow, right? Social yeah. path. Yeah. <laughs> we can only give you shout, a, out, <laughs> shout out to everyone watching. Yeah, go ahead. We can only give you a path to follow, but it's really up to you. You know, how, how aggressively do you want to achieve your own goal? Okay. You know, and our goal as TMR Capital is to grow to the point where we've, we've helped people who also look like us. Mm. Because, I, because one thing is, especially in, in the minority community, it's, you know, we don't have that path. The path to success is, is a straight line. Yeah. It's where do you want to, where do you start? Mm. Now, some families who are well off, you know, who pass money to their generation, they start at the very end. Yeah. Some people start in the middle and there's a lot of us, majority of us start at the very, the, at the back. Yeah. So to do it yourself, it's very difficult to run this race. You want a team to help you do it. Okay. And that's where we come in. Wow. And that's Tim Mark Kaplan. And, and so far we're growing, you know, we, we hit some good numbers since inception um, but you know, we're not, we're not done yet. And we want to expose ourselves to as many people as possible. Cause the more we help, the more we grow. Yeah. And that's what we're about. Can you elaborate? Can you tell us how are you going to invest our money? Yeah. So we, we break it down to creating different portfolios for each investor. Each okay. investor has, we have a conversation with them first and then we will let them know, like, you know, whether it's in the stock market, whether it's in real estate investments, whether it's, it's small capital investments that we're doing for people. Um, we have an, an array of, of different strategies to employ. Um, but again, it depends on the individual, you know, not to give a, give them the, the formula, <laughs> you know, that's something that you have to yeah. become a client to really understand. Yeah. And, and right. look, we're willing to share. There's no, there's nothing that we're hiding that we're doing. You know, we're going to make sure that we tap into 
each individual's household because everybody has goals and aspirations. When you come to America, you have a big goal. Yeah. But then as as you, you start living in this country and you see how hard it is, yeah. you tend to want to give up on your goal. That's well, true. we want to help you sustain that goal and achieve it. So, mm-hmm. you know, it takes one indi- individual at a time, you know, mm-hmm. and, and the world of investments is don't be in a rush to succeed. Yeah. You know, I remember listening to Rick Ross one time. He goes, I don't want to just do it fast. I want to do it correctly. Wow. That was impactful that's because deep. that's deep. Because yes, you know, yeah. success can happen over overnight. But let me ask you a question. If I told you I'm gonna build you a house overnight, you think that house is gonna last long? No. It'll probably fall apart within a week. Yeah. But if I took my time and built brick by brick, like Will Smith said, brick by brick, that house is not gonna yes, eventually we're gonna create the house, but it's gonna last a lifetime. Yeah. And that's what we're talking about here, lifetime generation of wealth, right? Wow. So um, there's a starting point. Everybody has a different starting point and mm-hmm. we're going to have our own. We're going to teach you um, certain things. We're going to communicate yeah. with the with the investor, let them know what's going on. Mm-hmm. You know, when we're meeting different, you know, whether it's athletes or the common folk person, you know, when we're sitting down with them, we're going to be real. You know, wow. we're going to get to know the individual and their goal becomes our goal. Yeah. You know, uh, family, I know you enjoy yourself. I want to ask Harry this question. So Harry, I want to know more about you, like your personal life. <laughs> okay. I mean, when did you come to this country? Did you grow up in America? Oh, no. So I came to this country in 92. Okay. Um, my dad had a big ambition, big goal, you know, coming from Nigeria. You, um, you know, he was a he was in nursing, teaching. Um, and just to share my dad's story real quick. You know, my dad, um, there was an exam that you had to take to, to get your visa and there was only like okay. a certain amount of visas that were given out. Yeah. I think it was like 50 people went to take the, um, this exam and only like five people passed. Wow. But the story that my dad shared with me was, um, you know, we were very, very poor. Mm. And there was a day where my dad went to go to the market. My dad and my mom went to the market to buy bones. That's how poor we were, to buy bones. Why? Because wow. bones has... Bone marrow that can, you know, give you the, the, the stew taste. Yeah, yeah. So when my dad dropped my mom off, my dad was like, oh, go in there, I'll meet you. Meanwhile, he had the results of the exam he took. Mm. So my mom went and my dad opened the results and just stood in his car. And then when my mom came after like 30 minutes, she goes, oh, what's going on? You didn't come out. What, mm. Why are you crying? Mm, mm. My dad was silent. He goes, the reason why I'm crying is because we're going to America. Cause he had passed. Wow. Was it like a family visa? Yeah. Like, oh, uh, no, it was just one visa. One visa. Okay. So he came to this country himself. Okay. And then once he got established, he was able to bring us over. Wow. But, so I came in this country at 92, but it was because of that story mm. that I said to myself, you know what? I'm not going to just play with this opportunity. Mm. I'm in America now. I'm going to make the best of it. Mm. You know, I'm going to do things that people don't think I, I'm capable of doing, mm. you know, because of my, my dad, right. And his yeah. ambition to bring his family. Now, I'm a, I'm a family, I'm the youngest in my family. I have an okay. older brother who's an engineer, civil engineer. Mm. Uh, my sister went to West Point. Uh, she works for Microsoft. And me, I'm a background started in chemical engineering. Now I'm entering the financial sector as well. Yeah. And yeah, my parents both in healthcare, mm. in the hospitals to this day work as hard as they, as they did day one. Yeah. So one of my biggest goals is just to retire them correctly, right? Yeah. Not just retire and sit down. No, give them the experiences mm. that they want to do because they sacrificed for us now as a kid. Sacrifice for them. That's true. You know, so that's that's who you know where you know where I'm at. We moved to New York first for mm. about six years, Lower East Manhattan. Okay. Um, and how was living in, in the city like? Oh man, it, it was um, <laughs> it was eye opening because yeah. First of all, we're talking about ninety two, early nineties. So being African is not like today, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, these, I remember a lot, being, a lot has changed. We call we call, we used to call a lot of names, and a lot of Africans will attest to this. Like, you know, African booty scratcher, go go, <laughs> go back home, um, wow. all these things. And then you know, now it's funny you see Africans today, and, and we're 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 appreciated because mm. of the music and because of the culture. Yeah, but back then. Yeah, I used to get picked on a lot. You know, I was a fat, chubby kid getting picked on, not knowing. Really? Who. And now look oh, at yeah, you. Yeah, what did yeah. you do, bro? Tell it's called, us. It's called, it's called just, it's just motivation. You know, you, you get to the point where you say to yourself, you know what? Enough is enough. Mm. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, right? Yeah, so yeah. let me put, get in shape. And getting in shape, I didn't get in shape till I was probably, probably uh, junior high, you know? Wow. 
But you know, once I got in shape, oh, wait, I got more wait, confident. Wait, wait. Yeah, let, let me hold you. Yeah, let, yeah, just, 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 just hold your thoughts on that. Yeah. Were you bullied in school because you were fat? Bullied in school because I was fat, foreigner. You know, um, I spoke English, but it, it, I just not the, the level as yeah. as they had had yeah. an accent, so they knew I was a foreigner. Mm. You know, so it's like when you don't know about a, an individual, yeah. right? You tend to want to keep them down. Mm. And maybe subconsciously, but you just want to keep them down. So yeah, they used to push me. And I remember one time my my mom came to my rescue and was like, "Yo, this is the last time you hit my son." <laughs> Wait, your mom came to the school? Yeah, because my mom used to pick me up all the time. So yeah. like, she saw me getting pushed around once, uh -huh. and she was like, "Who that?" She took the kid like, "You ever?" <laughs> You know what I mean? My mom's oh man, my I mom, mom. My mom, yeah, 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 my mom is tough. Can't. What? No, no, my mom is the real deal, Holyfield. Like mm. she, she holds her own. She's very nice, though. You meet her, she's an angel. She's Mother Teresa. Yeah. But if you cross her, she'll give you that look, like you'll never again. Right? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, again, I, my family they mean a lot to me. But yeah, yeah. I used to get put because I, I was not, I wasn't a common person. Yeah. In America. Mm. Um, but over time, you make a friend in here, and then you get introduced to a lot more stuff. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't like the, you know, these kids were, they would do bad things and then yeah. you just so somewhat joined them, Join you know? Them, yeah. I mean, one time I got so ingrained into being like an American kid mm. that I, I started to bully other people. Oh, wow. Wait, I remember, wait, wait, who were you bullying? Was it your African brothers? No, I don't know. It was, a, it was, you know, there was a kid, um, I won't say his name, but there was a kid who came from like Egypt. Mm. You know, and he was a foreigner, didn't speak much English. So he's in Africa. He came from Africa. Yeah, technically, yeah, <laughs> technically, yeah, yeah. He, African, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And I remember one time, one of the kids had an idea was to bully him. Oh, wow. And I'm just trying to fit in. Like, I wasn't even trying to, like, really care about bullying this kid. But I was just trying to fit in. So then when we started to, you know, bully him, beat him up, I remember seeing this kid run straight into the, into because we were outside in the playground. Yeah, he yeah. ran straight into the, the school going gunning for the the principal's office mm -hmm. so i'm like you know what i ain't trying to be in trouble <laughs> you know african african parents they'll, they'll whoop you right? oh yes okay yeah don't so break I, that so up. i was mm -hmm. so i ran right behind him he was like all oh, these kids are bullying me beating me up and i'm like yeah i saw the whole thing <laughs> you know what i mean like I, they were bullying and pushing i'm like yo I, you know i'm not saying his name but i'm like yeah i was i saw the whole thing like mm -hmm. they should get in trouble mm -hmm. So they all got in trouble except me. Why? Because I wow. left that group. I was like, I ain't getting in trouble for them. No, 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 no. I'm just trying to fit in. <laughs> that's just trying to fit in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So continue uh, with with education. Yeah. So um, I mean, it's funny too yeah. because in, in terms of education, yeah. like New York systems, I don't know what it is. It was just too difficult. Maybe Wait, because in high school or in college. Well, well this is elementary school, so I'm gonna okay. just give you like a little timeline. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Like yes. elementary school in New York. I mean, again, this is the 90s. So the teachings are just different, you know, mm -hmm. all these state exams. It's like, what am I doing? I guess in New York, it's just so much more um, uh, distraction, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so even growing up, I was I was terrible in school. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, didn't, it didn't, I guess what happened for me was when we moved to Jersey, I said to myself, this is a new start. I'm going to really focus. I'm going to really pay attention. Mm -hmm. And I did my best. I was like an A student, you know, I was getting B's and C's to be honest. Yeah. But then high school happened. And I remember one time towards the end of high school, you know, I was an athlete. I did a lot of track and field, played football, mm. basketball. I did every sport you can think of. Yeah. But I remember one time when my professor, she Wait, was like, when you were like still fat? Well, at this point I had lost weight. Lost weight. Okay. At this point I had dedicated myself to being, yeah. you know, in healthier shape. Wow, that's good. Um, I had some good coaches too. Like, mm -hmm. you know, that's the thing about life. You need mentors. You know, yeah, if you don't have a mentor, good. then it's it's cool to say you did it yourself, but a mentor will get you to your your goal faster, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but at this time, towards the end of high school, I remember one of my teachers, she was like, Harry, your charm will only get you so far. Wow. And this is a teacher that to this day, she is my motivation. She doesn't know it. And mm. I'll never say her name, mm. but she doesn't know it. But mm. Mm. I remember one time I was so bad in math. Every single morning I would come to her, knock on that teacher's facility. Yeah. Hey, can you help me out? And she would basically just solve the problems that I couldn't and um, solve myself yeah. without teaching me. Mm. And I'm mm. looking at it's like, what did how you do? do? Yeah, how did you do it? And I took her course. I took her class. And... I guess maybe it was the fact that the whole school knew who I was. Yeah. I was doing well in, as an athlete and 
she said something to me that I was just like, nah, that's not right. You don't say that to a kid, right? Like, oh, your trauma won't take you so far. What does that mean, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But I took it so negative, like, oh, okay. So you don't think I'm a smart kid. Okay, so before, after I graduated high school, I went straight to college. There was no summertime. Yeah. Like I did a, a, a summer program called EOP mm. um, at NGIT. Um, greatest school in, in the nation, by the way. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> greatest. <laughs> but I, I, I took I took this um, program, EOP, Equal Opportunity Program, yeah. and basically teach you before you go into college, mm. right before your, your first year. So going into your first year, you know a lot. Yeah. And you have friends, too, that you make. So you know yeah. people. But I made sure that, hey, look, if if math is my flaw... I'm going to overcome my flaw. Mm. And then once I did that, then things started to open to me, right? New mm. opportunities start to open, internships, all that, because I took care of the math part. Yeah. See, a lot of times people run away from their challenge. Mm. I was running towards it because wow, if, that's if, good. if this is my challenge, yeah. you need to take it. I mean, yeah, like you need to overcome that, that's right? True, because yeah. that's what's holding you back. Yeah. If a challenge like that holds you back, what else is going to hold you back in life? Mm. So mm. overcome that, teach yourself that you can overcome any challenge. Yeah. And then you can you start you start your running your race right yeah. so once I did that man Sam I I became too confident mm. you know what I mean like I was getting a lot of internships you know I had my inner circle of friends they were getting internships so we were all competing but people looking from the outside yeah were like yo what are they doing what is it that they're doing that we're not doing no, yeah and we were we were willing to teach mm. you know by the time I graduated you know we had this um organization called National Society of Black Engineers. And we had about 45 to 50 people who were attending our, our meetings, trying to learn how mm -hmm. to become more professional, mm -hmm. how to, you know, make the right decisions, how important grades were, but how more important networking was. Yeah. And I think about, I want to say by the time I graduated, 70% of people have full-time offers, you know, wow. and that, that's, that's not common. It's, yeah, not, it's not, that's it, yeah. You know, so we were- And what year was that? Uh, this was, this was 2011. 11, okay. Yeah, 2011. Okay. Um, so I've been out of school for a while, yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, but that's the thing too, right? It's like- Wait, you said 2011, so was that when well, we had 9-11? No, no, that's 2001. Oh, 2001, yeah, okay. that's okay. when um, the whole world changed, you know. So how, how, how was it? Um, Cause you said you were living in the city, right? Oh, so at this time, so I moved to I moved to Jersey. So I moved to the city in ninety two. Okay, and then I moved to Jersey in ninety eight. Mm. So I was only in the city for like what six years. Yeah. Um. So when when nine eleven happened, like I said, the whole world changed. It's funny because I was in a history class, and I remember the teacher playing this radio. Yeah. And sounds, sirens, people, you know, chaos. And I'm yeah. thinking this is like a story. Like a, a like a fake story, story that, that is like yeah. he's just telling us a story that yeah. happened in like the like you know radio stories. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like back in the fifties, that's what they used to do. So I'm just yeah. thinking, all right, he's just talking nonsense again. I mean, yeah. I don't pay attention. Then when I walked outside the classroom, I see a whole bunch of people crying. Wait, in were you in New Jersey or? Oh, I was in Jersey at this. Oh, time. you were in New Jersey. Yeah, I was okay. in New Jersey okay. at this time. So I walked out the class. Everybody was crying, and then I saw my sister. She was holding her friend who was crying. And then they took us to the, the cafeteria to show us what was going on. Mm. And I and I remember seeing those buildings fall. And I'm like, wow. Like wow. we we were in New York not mm. too long ago. Mm. Mm. You know, this is a real thing. You know, and I, I'm thinking, is this a movie? Wow. And I remember it's funny because I remember once that happened, they sent us home. No TVs. If you remember, there was no networks. Like, yeah, your yeah, TV I mean, didn't no work. social media. Like, yeah, like you know? I, I, honestly, I actually, it's funny. Right before that happened, I recorded this movie Friday. I don't know if people know who, you know Friday, Chris Tucker, Ice yeah. Cube. There was no TV, so I, I literally just watched that same videotape. This mm. is back in this is back in the day, so videotapes don't exist anymore, right? Yeah, but I watched the same videotape four times a day. I know that I know every line to that movie. I know this is away from the whole mm. experience and story, but yeah, I'm just telling you, like I, I literally watched that videotape nonstop and I'm like, this cannot be life, right? Like mm. there's nothing to do. Nobody was going now. Everybody mm. was afraid. Mm. And then, you know, the sad part, people who were from that you know country that they were blaming for the people who did, you know, cause 9-11, you know, then a lot more hate starts to go towards them. So yeah. it, it, it never, it started, it stopped being like, White and black, right? Mm -hmm. Now it's white and brown. 
Wow. You know, if you yeah. notice that. Yeah, yeah. You know, and 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 things transpired the way it transpired. Um, but yeah, it was a crazy time, you know, and we all yeah. learned from that. You know, we all check our scenarios twice now. You Correct. know, security yeah. has been up, jacked up. up. Yeah. You know, people were probably living in fear for a while. For a while. You know. You know, it was it was terrible. I mean, I was I was in Ghana when it happened. Wow. Yeah, I wasn't here. I was in Ghana and we saw it on the news and I mean my heart. I was I was I was crying within myself. You know, people lost their, their their loved ones. Right. You know, the building collapsed, businesses. Yeah. You know, it, you know, it was terrible. And it's funny, like you hear everybody's story, right? Like mm. even celebrities. Yeah. Like I remember I was into a story where Jackie Chan was like, that day I was supposed to do some type of production in one of the buildings. Oh. But wow. something had so, transpired so and he that didn't save them. I'm thing. telling you. I mean, Things happen for a reason. For a reason. You know, right. and, and unfortunately, sometimes people get sacrificed, you know, mm. um, to help the better, the the majority of the population. Or, yeah. yeah. You know, but yeah, it's a sad time, but we all learn from it. You know, we never forget, mm. you know. Um, when you say people get sacrificed for the majority, like, what do you mean? Yeah, like, you know, that saying things happen for a reason is mm. because, like, there's some long term plan, right? So, yeah. Let's say, for example, somebody gets into a car crash. Mm. It gets exploited into the news. Mm. Well, the reason why you're watching what they're showing in the news is so that you don't get into a car crash. You yeah. don't do what that person did. Yeah. Maybe that person wasn't doing anything wrong. Mm. Be more aware of your surroundings yeah. when you drive. So that's, yeah. that's what that means. Like yeah. Sometimes somebody needs to be made an example, even a good person. person. Mm. But that good person is going to actually be sacrificed to help everybody. Yeah, but you I know. mean that word is so strong. Yeah, it <laughs> is. It is strong. Yeah, you, you know, know not it, not to be like intentional. Yeah, but I mean it happens. But whatever happens, we try to take the best out of it and educate people not to you know right. do the same thing. Right. You know, so that's that's why we have the news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So back back to um, let me just rewind back back to the high school you were saying in college, right? You went to college, and uh, you had some. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Some group and yeah. All that. So like like I said, I went to school earlier than the normal person. I didn't yeah. go I didn't have a summertime that school. So as soon as I graduated high school, I like I think it was like four, three or four days I went to college. And yeah, it was a it was called the Equal Opportunity Program. Basically a program for people who are in inner cities. Maybe people didn't have a good chance of going to college. So yeah. NGIT was receiving them and you know, basically giving them like a, a, a head up in terms of their education, right? Mm -hmm. Like teaching them some of the things that they lacked in, right? So you take an exam, whatever you lacked in, they'll place you into certain courses and then they'll help develop you. So when you start, when you start college, you're not failing out. You're yeah. actually going to do well. Mm. Um, so it was, it was that program where it was like a boot camp. Mm. You know, you had a certain schedule, wake up a certain time, eat breakfast and boom, 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 class. And when you're done with the class, you do your homework and then you have um, study hours. You come back to the classroom, study hours, and you're all doing it together. Yeah. You know, and I think it was that experience that, that allowed me to really hone hone my skills, focus on what school's about, you know, this thing called life, right? Because when you're in high school, you know, you're sheltered by your parents. If yeah. not, you're, you know, you're, you're in a closed system. But when you go into college and in the real world, there's no more closed system. Yeah. yeah. So it's preparing you for life. Mm. So I was prepared for life because I had good mentors. Like I said, there's this guy named Dr. Howe. Mm. You know, I remember when we first had our, our first meeting. I'm going to shout out to Dr. Howe because he's my mentor. <laughs> Love him. Yeah. But we had our first meeting. So like, think picture like a... Um, a hall with a whole bunch of kids. Mm. Now he came from the military. So he goes, you know, look to your left, look to your right. By the time you guys are done here, you're not gonna, not everybody's gonna be in this room. Mm. Maybe one third of you guys will be in this room if, mm. if at best. Yeah. So don't be the people, don't be one of the ones that don't, don't make it. Wow. I remember when he said so he to me. He was tough. Yeah, when I said to me, I look, I look to my left, I look to my right, I'm like, nope, that's not gonna be me. me. I'm gonna make this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, I was just so focused trying to prove him right. Like, yeah. I, you can make it. Mm. It doesn't matter how you look or what mm. color your skin is or mm. whatever where you come from, you mm. can make it. Yeah. Why not? Mm. See, this program that they teach us is, oh, it's hard. If you start telling yourself, no, it's, it's easy. Mm. If, if somebody else can do it, I could do it. Mm. Then you can start... You can just start doing it. For example, yeah. right? And I love this story because I hear it all the time on mm. YouTube. Roger Bannister, you know who that is? No. So Roger Bannister back in the day was, he was a runner, mm. right? Um, they used to tell them, tell him, oh, running a mile 
in four minutes, it's impossible. Mm, mm. So everybody, everybody was programmed to think that way. They it's think a, that it's way, impossible. Yeah. yeah. But he goes, you know what? I want to make the impossible possible. Mm. And he trained his body to the point where it was like inhumane, mm. you know, like, how's he doing this? Like mm. most people will probably die by this time. Mm. He tried to do what he's doing. Yeah. Well, long story short, he was able to do that. Mm. He achieved a mile in four minutes. And then after that, somebody else broke it. Wow. But think about that. At that time, it was impossible. Possible. Fast forward today. Yeah. You have kids in high school doing that. Mm. Mm. See, it's a program that we tell ourselves. Correct. It's impossible. It's tough. It's hard. Don't Wait, do it. Wait, is it, is, it, is it like all Nigerians? No, I'm, it's just the common person, right? Mm -hmm. You know, this, this shield we, we put in ourselves or we put for ourselves, is, is it, it holds us back, right? Yeah. So when somebody says, hey, becoming a, a multimillionaire, it's tough. Mm -hmm. Well, then you, you start to believe it's tough. It's tough, yeah. You just you but what, spoke it. It's but but what, what, you, what right? has today's society have t taught us? Mm. It's actually easier than we think. Yeah. You know, um, there's people who are, I remember reading about this 12-year-old who's on YouTube making like, like, a, like what was it, like $500,000 $500, a month or something like that. Mm. Kids are doing it. Mm, mm. Why is it so tough? It's because the program we tell ourselves, mm. you know, so believe in the impossible, like stop trying to put these barriers in front of you. Like mm. just keep moving, yeah. you know, and when those tough times happen, find a way to go around it. So did, did your parents actually raise you in a Christian way? Um, I mean, because to be this positive, like I'm, I'm like, what happened? What was the cause? <laughs> I mean, growing up, so my parents, they just told us not to do wrong. Mm. It wasn't like, you know, go to church every Sunday. We weren't mm. doing that. I mean, my mom would pray, you know, often. Um, but no, it wasn't really, I wasn't really taught. Look, when I used to watch infomercials about church, I find a way to change the channel. <laughs> Why? <laughs> it was just uh, I want to watch cartoons, right? <laughs> like I want to watch yeah. this. Yeah. Um, but you know, and the only reason why too, right, is mm. because I, when you don't go through something, yeah, there's no you don't seek help, you don't seek guidance, mm. you just live your life. Mm. Mm. But then when you run into that that wall, like mm. that challenge, something happened, mm. then you start to listen to like certain things, certain people. Yeah. Um, I remember. I mean, not to jump back and forth, but I remember when I got laid off for the first time. Back in 2013, I was bummed out, mm. you know, and this is a time when I wasn't really going to church as, as I would like to. I was going to church, but not as, 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 as I would what like church, to. What church? What church? Uh, it was a New Hope Baptist Church in Newark, New Jersey. Okay. Great church. It's actually yeah. the church that they buried. Uh, they did the service for Whitney Houston. Okay. Because um, her mom was going to that church. Yeah. But um, I remember when I got laid off, I, I went to the nearest church and I just parked my car. And I remember looking up to the sky because I never, I was never prepared for that. Mm. See, college taught me a lot to be hard, mm. hard work. You know, yeah. nothing's going to happen to you if you work yeah. your, your butt off. I mean, you, you said you went to the extreme being hard. So, right. Yeah. So, so when you get faced with a challenge of getting laid off for the first time mm. mentally, that like, My huh? God. like that, that happened to mm. me. Mm. You know? Wait, what was it your first job? Very first, well, very first full-time job. Okay. You know, I had internships. Yeah. But I remember when I got laid off, it was like a major setback like that, that I never planned for. Like mm. I, it wasn't because I did anything wrong. It wasn't because I wasn't smart enough. It was because the, the, the job that I was working at at the time, they made a decision to lay off like 700 people and okay. I was just one of them. Mm. It was a business decision. I remember them saying that this is a business decision, mm. Mm. a pharmaceutical company. Mm. And that was a day where I was like, nah, this is not it, right? Like I remember, Parking my car, looking up to the sky, like God, what what was this? What's going on? Like, wow. like why? Like, yeah. why me? Have anybody else? Mm, right? Mm. And I remember. And how how long was this? This was back in 2013. 13. Okay. Yeah. But then, after overcoming it, right, eventually getting a job, whatever. And I told myself, once I get another job, I will never let this happen to me again. Wow. Make sure you have multiple streams of income, income. or the willingness to get multiple stream of in mm. streams of income. Why? Because to have one job is actually very dangerous. Yeah. It's it's common to have one job because why? Most of the people in America and in the world yeah. have one job. You yeah. don't need two jobs, right? Mm. Most companies don't even want you to have two jobs because mm. it removes a focus of what you're doing for them. Them. Right? To, to yeah. So... When you learn how dangerous it is to just have one job, you, tell, mm. you start to 
look for other things. Um, but again, it just shows you how expendi expendable you can be, right? Yeah. So I remember when, once I got a new job, I just told myself, don't let that happen again. But I remember when I said to God, I said, why me? Looking back, why not you? Right? Yeah. Why not you? Wait, you were talking to yourself? Yeah, talking to myself. Like, okay. Because I look back at the situation after I've gone through what I've gone through and, yeah. and overcame those things. I'm like, why not you? Mm. God prepared you from day one, from being bullied and coming to America, mm. from going to the, the tough critics of people who you look up to in school, telling yeah. you you can't do this and you, you, your charm will only take you this far. Mm. Then you're going through college and you, you're doing the right things. And then you go through these mentor, mentorship programs and mm. you, you learn from the, the people who have gone through stuff in life. Mm. So now when you have a challenge, why not you? Wow. God prepared you for this. Yeah. You, know? you know what? It's, it's really getting interesting. Okay. And uh, this is just our first episode. Uh, we'll try to do this as often as possible. Right. So see you on the next episode. We're going to continue. Please stay right there. Please watch out for the next episode. We're going to delve more deep. Harry is, you know, he's giving us a lot of um, information about himself. And I'm loving it. I hope you're also loving it too. So stay blessed. We're going to see you on the next episode. Peace out. I, I was spending twenty twenty five dollars a week just trying to be somebody that I'm not. You know what I mean? Like I want I mean, to keep that look. It looks good on you though. Oh, now it does. Now it does. Bro, it didn't look this good before, right? The one thing I noticed about when you go to a barber, right? Us men, we don't talk. Yeah. Right. It's just yeah. oh, we want this and then let the barber do his thing. Mm. My man made me Dominican, man. Like, he, <laughs> like I'm like, uh, should I be saying poppy at this at the end? Like, come on, man. Like, that's not what I wanted, but I, I yeah. think it came out. Okay.